Could the use of video-based machine learning lead to an earlier diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease? Well, Dr. Stephanie Miller and a team of scientists at Gladstone Institute believe so. Dr. Miller is here with me right now to talk about her remarkable findings in this new study. Thank you for being here. It's a pleasure to be here. So this is very interesting. When it comes to uh, tracking behaviors and symptoms for Alzheimer's disease, there are ways, behaviors that set in earlier, and you are utilizing mice to try and track that. Can you break that down? Absolutely. So um, this is an exciting moment in the development and the emergence of AI technologies. And we are adapting these approaches in order to detect the onset of disease in mouse models of Alzheimer's disease. There's a specific need for us to be able to detect disease earlier so that we can develop treatments that are gonna be able to change the course of disease and hopefully make it so that people don't even need to get sick in the first place. That's incredible. That would be amazing if that's the path that you're on. So you're using this video-based machine learning. How is that incorporated? Yes, when we um, assess animals for the study of uh, diseases of neurodegeneration, um, or in this case, dementia, it's very important that we're able to determine whether there are going to be any changes in the animal's um, cognitive performance, for example. And of course, you can't ask a mouse how it's feeling or how it's functioning. And so we need to use tests that are designed to probe specific elements of behavior, for example, memory or anxiety. Our research flips the script and we actually studied the animal as it basically walks around and, and does what it would like to do, which we call spontaneous or naturalistic behavior because before the emergence of these new AI technologies, it was actually unfeasible to determine whether there are signatures of disease in this incredibly rich organization of spontaneous behavior. What else have you discovered and what are some of the outcomes so far? We had two main findings in our most recently published manuscript, which came out in uh, Cell Reports just a few months ago. We first discovered that in these newly available um, humanized knock-in animals, um, which are available um, basically post-CRISPR, these animals have a more realistic type of disease, but their um, behavioral phenotype might be more subtle or difficult to assess using conventional behavioral methods. But using our new, much more sensitive method, we were able to identify robust signatures of disease. And in a second group of mice, who are, um, they, these are transgenic animals that do have a very overt presentation of disease in these conventional approaches, using our machine learning approach, we were able to identify those signatures of disease and in a second group of animals that we studied alongside them, these animals had a therapeutic intervention that prevented their disease from progressing. And so we've learned something very important about the mechanisms of disease progression using these animal models. Can this technology be used for other areas of medicine? That's a great question. I know that we had to innovate these methods specifically in Alzheimer's disease research because it is by definition difficult to assess disease at these preclinical prodromal stages. Now, I can easily imagine these methods being translated into other studies of neurodegeneration or other neurological disorders, certainly. The next step, I would assume, is human trials and try to do some early preclinical stage diagnosis, is that right? Absolutely. In addition to continuing to develop these methods to be even more successful for the drug development pipeline that moves through animal models of disease, it is very clear that we need to adapt these methods for use in uh, clinical studies. And so we're hoping to begin to partner with clinical researchers so that we can do just that. It's very exciting. This affects so many people's lives. So congratulations on this research. Thank you for being here. Thank you.